Antics, welcome to my channel. I hope you are well today and staying safe. Now the government has announced another three week lockdown for us here in the UK, which is good because we need to be staying home to save those lives. But also it is a perfect time to hone some of your creativity and get crafty with it. Because what better time to learn a new craft and occupy your time so that you are not bored you're not dwindling and thinking of all these negative things that are going out in the world. Get a bit of positivity in your life and learn a new skill in crafting. So in this week's video, I thought I would show you how to upstyle a little piece of furniture or how I upstyle the little piece of furniture. My neighbour kindly gave me a sewing caddy. She was getting rid of a lot of her sewing stuff and I have been lucky enough to get my hands on some of this. Now this is a wooden box with some drawers and some um, spindles to store some cotton reels. It is a plain wooden box with slightly orangey tones and that is not my style at all. I'm not a real big fan of orangey toned woods so I thought I would upstyle this to make it a bit more pleasing to my aesthetic and try out a new skill of decoupaging. Now if you don't know what decoupaging is, I'm hoping I am pronouncing that properly because I'm not quite sure if that's right, but it is basically sticking things to other things using Mod, mod Pod glue or like a PVA style glue to create some really cool effects on furniture or any object that you decide to do it to. You can do it on bottles, cans, furniture, all sorts of possibilities are endless. So if you would like to see how this sewing caddy turns out, as well as maybe picking up a few decoupaging tips and some inspiration of what you could be doing with your time, then let's get crafting. So here is the sewing caddy slash sewing drawer storage before the makeover. Before any work can be done to this, I needed to remove all of the sewing pieces that were included. So this is all the stuff in the drawers and all the cotton reels on the top. Then it's time to give the little box a good clean down just using a dry cloth like a duster cloth just to get rid of any of those dust bits that I've gathered in the crevices before moving on to giving the piece a good sanding. So the next step was to really sand down all of the sewing box. I used 80 grit sandpaper here which is like a medium grit sandpaper and it really helped in removing some of the varnish that was on the wooden box. Now the paint that I use later on you don't actually need to sand down the wood for this but I wanted to just to bring it up and actually see if I could make the wood paler before painting. But yes, sanding it all down worked well. So I tackled the inner drawers first before moving on to the actual base of the sewing box. This was a little bit more trickier to sand down and did take quite a bit of time just because of the size of it compared to the wooden drawers. But again, I think it really sanded up well and I just used the same piece of sandpaper as before. So I've managed to sand all of the four sides apart from the top um, not quite sure how to go about this yet I do need to sand it down maybe I need to take these wooden dowels out maybe I don't know because they're what the spools will go on but I think they'll need paint as well so I don't know if it's going to be easier to take them out and paint or try and do it all around them I don't know how secure they are oh mind you that one's quite loose so they might be best to come out but that was tiring, my god, my arms are aching from sanding that. Did you ever see the programme years and years ago, the new Yankee workshop? I felt like Norm. Norm is the guy who does all the carpentry on there and it's his little workshop. So call me Norma, the female version of the new Yankee workshop's Norm. 
So as you can see, I did decide to take out the wooden dials, one because some of them were slightly loose anyway, and two because I thought it, this would make it a bit easier in sanding down the top and getting the look that I wanted from the sewing caddy. Using the same piece of sandpaper, I just went in the top and really sanded this down, removing all of that orangey toned varnish that was on the top. As you can see, it has sanded down really well. And then it was time to start sanding down all the individual pieces of dowling to remove the varnish that was on them and some of that excess wood glue that remained once I had removed them from their holes. So that's all the sanding now complete. My arms are killing them wooden dials. I actually found my nails as well as the dials down. Um, I took all the little dials out of the top because I thought that would make it a little bit easier to um, paint, well sand down and then paint. So now I've got to go through the paint staking process of gluing them all back in. Once they're glued in, that's got to then dry for about 24 hours. So, it's going to be a bit of a longer DIY than I thought. Um, so yeah, let's carry on with it. Before re-gluing in all the dowel pieces, I had to just give the box a quick clean up, making sure there was no loose bits of sawdust on there, as well as clearing down the workspace because I didn't want any of the sawdust to get mixed in with the glue. So I also used a Q-tip just to clean inside each of the dowling holes to make sure this was free enough to put some more glue in. And then it was time to use the trusted Gorilla wood glue to glue in the wooden dials again. So I placed a bit into one of the holes and I do think I did put slightly too much in for the first go but I learned as I went on. So then I pushed the dials as far as they would go into their hole and cleaned up any of the excess glue that squirted out from this. The most difficult part of this was making sure all of the wooden dowels stayed upright and were straight so I had to keep going back and checking that each one was as straight as possible and in line because otherwise the cotton spools wouldn't fit on them again. So now that is all glued together it is time to let it set for about 24 hours so that is it for the main bit. What I can do now is do a little bit of painting on the drawers, so let's get on to that bit. My paint of choice is the Rust-Oleum Chalky Finish Furniture Paint in the shade Antique White. Now I used this previously on a Christmas DIY to make my advent countdown sign, so be sure to check that out as well, I will place it in a card above. And I just gave the drawers a thin coat covering all sides of the drawer and then I actually decided to do the insides as well because I thought this just gave it a bit more of a polished finish. Now this paint is chalky so it doesn't quite leave a nice shine as a gloss would but I really liked the effect of that. I then went in with a second coat the next day because that was the amount of drying time between coats. After the dowels had set in place with the wood glue it was time to give the box a good coat of the paint as well. So I went in again giving this a thin coat and then reapplying the second layer the next day because I think that was the amount of drying time between the coats again. Then it was time to paint the top of the box. Now this was the most difficult part of this painting process just because of the spindles and I did originally want to just paint it and then place the spindles in but I was advised by my dad that that wouldn't work and you did actually have to have them all in place before painting. So to cover the dowling I used a smaller paintbrush to make sure they were fully coated evenly. And this is what it looks like after the two coats have been applied. 
So once the paint had dried, it was time to move on to the fun step of decoupaging. Now I am just using some paper from my card making stock and it is more of an Art Deco Rose Gold type feel to it and it's got a really nice shine to it. So I just cut out a few of the shell shapes from this pattern and then played around with where I wanted them to be positioned on the sewing caddy. So I opted to go for the four corners of the drawers and thought this gave it a really nice look. So I used two different types of brushes to get the decoupage look, using the hard bristled brush to place on the Mod Podge. I just placed a thin layer onto the drawer front where I wanted the pieces to sit and then coated the back of these pieces with some more Mod Podge. Now because they are quite loosely sitting on you really do need to press them in and apply a bit more Mod Podge over the top and then they will finally set in place so make sure you have got it in place where you want it to sit then I just went in over the top with the thinner looser type brush and just removed any excess and any air bubbles that may have formed in the paper so after completing the fronts of the drawers, I thought the box still needed a bit more pizzazz. So I went and decoupaged some more of those shell shapes onto each side of the sewing caddy box, opting to put them in each of the four corners. And then I thought, well, I could use some more shells with this. So I ended up placing another two shells in the middle of these on either sides of the box. And I think the effect afterwards was really good, but I do think maybe doing a bit more of a mosaic or building up from one corner and going out would have given a really good effect too. To give the sewing caddy a finished look, I decided to add in some imitation rose gold leaf. And I just taped off with some painter's tape around each edge so there was only a thin line, placing on some Mod Podge and then sticking over the rose gold foil, tapping it down with the thin paper that it came with so that my fingers weren't quite touching it, and just trying to stick this into place. Now it didn't fully take in all areas and it did break off as you can see here, and I'm not sure if Mod podging rose gold leaf onto the project is the best way of doing it so I tried to just tack this into place as well using the brush but again it did give a bit of a patchy look to it I didn't mind this because I thought it had a bit of a shabby chic look 24 hours later it was dried so gonna have a little go at taking this off and seeing how it turned out, I've got a feeling it's going to be a complete disaster. So removing the painter's tape did pull off a little bit of the gold leaf, but I think this added to the shabby chic look to it. And just to even out this look, I decided to place a bit more of the gold foil in the all four corners on the bottom of the sewing caddy, just to give it a little bit more of an even look. And I quite like how it has turned out. And then my sewing caddy was complete. how to upstyle a piece of furniture using decoupage to add a really nice effect to the piece. Now I think it did turn out well, I do like how it's turned out but it is not 100% what I had in mind when I started the project. Now I think the thing for me that lets it down is maybe the gold foiling. I don't think this was the correct technique to add in this piece to the furniture um, but it has given it a bit of a shabby chic look and I do like that shabby chic style as well as it ties in with a bit more of that art deco and those are two styles that I like so I do like how the pieces turn out but I think the gold technique needs some work and it's something I am going to work on and maybe feature again in some other videos once I have the technique down. Please do let me know in the comments below if you like the project, if there's stuff you would do differently and if you do have any decoupaging or gold foiling tips, post them in the comments as well because I would love to hear them. 
If you like the video, please do give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep up with more of my crafting antics. Travel will hopefully resume once it is safe to do so. And check out my blog linked below as well because there's a ton more information over on Ames's antics. With that said, I hope this has given you a bit of inspiration and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Smile for, smile by, smile